You can't help feeling nice and safe in a car, can you? Look at this one. Airbags, head restraints, collapsible steering column, side impact bars. In fact, you've got absolutely everything, the whole shooting match. But what have we as bikers got? We've got a helmet to protect us, gloves, pair of boots, and perhaps leathers or a good protective suit, and that's all. But what about airbags for bikes? Well, we're at the Transport Research Laboratory and we're going to find out more. And here, in the impact test facility, is where we're going to find Dr Brian Chin. He's the man who's responsible for all of the bike research done at the TRL. Now, first off, Brian, you're not some sort of anti-bike boffin, are you? Oh, definitely not. Definitely not. No. I have a, a 1929 AJS. Very nice too. Is that got airbags on it? Good heavens, no. It hasn't even got lights, let alone airbags. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, Tell me, before we actually get into the airbag setup for real, can you just take us through the background behind your research? Yes, it was government-sponsored research, and they were very concerned about the high rate of accidents and injuries to motorcyclists, and in particular to the head injuries, which cause many of the fatalities which we see. So where do you start your work then? We know that around 70% of bike accidents involve another vehicle, so are they mainly, what, side impacts? Uh, no, not necessarily. But the start of our research is always accident investigation to find out exactly how the motorcyclist hits the car and what injuries are caused by different types of accident. And then we use this information to plan the programme of research to make sure that the tests we do and the impacts we do are representative of the accidents that are happening on the road. So, in, in essence, are they ones, is it the old T-bone thing or are they glancing blows or, or, or what? Well, there are a number of types of accident mechanism, and it's generally the sort of T-bone one that you describe, where a car pulls out from a side turning into the path of a motorcyclist and he hits the car in the side that cause many of the fatal and very serious head injuries. But it's more the glancing blows where the motorcyclist hits the side of the car at a shallow angle, which give rise to many of the very serious leg injuries which occur to motorcyclists. And if the, the rider goes over the, the top, this is when he bangs his head on the, on the roof? Yes, when a car, for example, pulls out of a side road into the path of a motorcycle, the motorcycle hits the car in the side and the rider is immediately thrown off at the velocity of the impact, which, as you know, can be up 30, 40 miles an hour, and he's thrown into the side of the car, often head first. So what is the airbag actually designed to do? Well, the airbag is designed to inflate and control the trajectory of the rider so that he's not thrown into the path of the car that he's just hit but so that he leaves the motorcycle cleanly. Of course, he will still fall to the ground and he may have a few bumps and bruises and possibly even a broken bone, but he certainly will not sustain the serious or fatal head injuries that he might well have sustained if the airbag had not been on the motorcycle. So it's not actually to keep him on the bike, then it's to make it a smoother takeoff, is it? No, it's not to keep him on the motorcycle, but it is to hold him away from the car and eventually to separate from the motorcycle in a way that they don't, the motorcycle does not fall on top of him. Now, what about, you mentioned legs now, what about the leg protector part of it? They caused a bit of a fuss at the time when they were first mooted. Are they an essential part of the airbag technology? The, the leg protection is not an essential part of the airbag technology, but in this particular case, we use some foam in front of the knees to help control the trajectory of the rider. Now, this footage, it looks spectacular and, and frightening, and all these dummies that you use, is it an expensive process? I mean, how much are these dummies? Well, the dummies themselves cost well over £100,000 each with all the instrumentation, and each test costs somewhere between twenty pounds and £30,000, depending on the complexity of the test. For example, some are into just stationary vehicles, motorcycle moving, and the car stationary, but many of the tests were with both vehicles moving, and it's very difficult to do a test like that, particularly keeping the motorcycle upright at the right angle and at the right speed is quite a complex process. And how special are these dummies? I mean, they're anatomically correct. I mean, have they, have they got metal bones in or plastic bones? Or, or well, whatever? the dummies we used are based on a standard dummy, but it was extensively modified according to an ISO standard so that it was particularly suitable for motorcycle impact tests. For example, the legs were made of particularly specially made plastic components which would break like human bones. And the, the head of the dummy was, was treated with some special foam added to it so that the helmet, it represented 
the proper wearing of a helmet. And inside the dummy, there are very many measurements that are taken to represent the rapid rotation of the head, for example, which you get when a motorcyclist strikes the ground. And also, the, sometimes you get the rapid de deformation of the chest. And all these types of things were measured inside the dummy so that we could assess the potential for injury in each of the cases, uh, each of the impacts that we did on, uh, as in a part of our test series. So do you actually end up with broken plastic bones then? Yes, we do. We do sometimes. And then, of course, they have to be replaced. Yeah. But during the breaking of the bones, we get all the measurements we need to know just what happened in the test. And then we can correlate these with the sort of injuries we know motorcyclists experience in their legs. So, Brian, can we actually look at a bike that's been fitted with a, a bag for real? Yes, you can. We have a, a demonstration model which is constructed so that you can see how all the principles work. Although, of course, it won't inflate at the same speed as the real one. They can't do that. It's not safe. Well, Brian, this to me looks almost like a normal bike, any normal bike. I'm surprised the manufacturer hasn't actually done this. Well, Honda have actually fitted an airbag system to a gold wing and tested it experimentally. Have they? Yes, they have. Oh, and you, you live and learn. I didn't know that. But um, anyway, we're not here to talk about, about those. But I'm intrigued by this. What's this? Lotus on the tank. Mm -hmm. I know this is a Norton Commander, isn't it? Oh, it's a Norton Commander, all right. Yes, <laughs> they, they don't make them anymore like that. Uh. Um, no, that's there because Lotus Engineering developed the airbag system for us. Um, as a manufacturing sort of facility? As a manufacturing facility, facility yes, because yeah. TRL does not possess manufacturing mm. facilities ah. of that type. And this is the air airbag in here. I take it this is, be this is flexible because this has been used before. Cosmetically, that would be a, a smooth thing, like on a car steering wheel, would it be? Yes. As you can see from these slits here, in the original airbag system, that we used in tests. These would all have been closed and this would have been sealed. sealed. The slits are designed specially to give the airbag a free flow out of its container, yeah. but without throwing any of the, the, the cover into the face Most of the motorcyclist. Right. Unlike a car one, where it is a cover that flies off, isn't it, in cars, is it? Um, no, I don't think you have covers flying off even in cars, but I'm not too sure about that. Yeah. <laughs> but certainly... I don't know where the bag comes from. You just see uh, a cover. It's very it? important that you don't have bits of the cover yeah. coming up into the face of the motorcyclist. Okay. So, if I go on this, could we actually do a, a test? Yes, certainly. Yeah. Yes, okay. do, do. Get I'll, on I'll and I'll show exactly aboard. how it works. Normally going off prematurely, you know. No. So anyway, the rider's going along here, and I know that you set this one up, as you were saying earlier, to run off a, an air cylinder then. Yes, this yeah. is for demonstration purposes, and it's pumped up by a, a compressed air system. Right, so I'm not going to jump. Okay, can you... Right, I'll, I'll press it, then? Press it now, happens. and then we can see just what happens. Okay. And this is far, far slower, because it, it happens in milliseconds, doesn't it, the real one? Yes, Whee. the real one is, is almost like an explosion. This one is very much slower, so that we can... Wow! We can see just how it inflates and just how it looks when it is inflated. Have you thought of making it in the shape of an inflatable woman? That'd be... Uh, <laughs> sorry, girls. <laughs> That'd make you laugh, wouldn't it, eh? But, uh, wow, it's far bigger than I thought, but it's got to be this big, hasn't it, to do the, uh, to do the job? And what actually... What's holding it? That's all anchored firmly down below there. Yes, and it's anchored firmly, of course, by the, the area from which it's inflated, but yeah. inside the airbag, and you can see the stitching on the outside here, there are some special tethers. And yeah. the reason for the tethers inside the bag is to keep it rigid during the inflation so it doesn't slip from one side to the other, and oh, right. this prevents the motorcyclist from slipping around it yeah. in, in angled collisions. And is this, would it be firmer than this? I mean, is this yeah. fully inflated or what? Well, this is the shape that it would have when fully inflated, but of course the pressure inside is nothing like as high as it would be in the real thing. Right, it would be really firm. And the idea would be, I'd just do this sort of business, would I? You know, you'd rise up and be not, cushioned not, there. Not yeah. quite, because in the real airbag, there is a venting system. Right. And there would be a hole where you can see the stitching oh, I see here. That. Yeah. And the gas that's generated, the air, would come out of the hole and it would allow the airbag to act like an energy absorber. Because the one thing we do not want is to have it blown up and act like a spring. <laughs> so the, we exhaust the gases through this hole and the whole thing is then controlled and the rider moves forward against the airbag. The airbag contracts and it ah. contains the rider on or near the motorcycle until everything falls to the ground when the rider falls over the bag onto the ground 
and doesn't become entangled with the bike. And this is what we, we saw in the video then. I mean, this is all happening in a split second, milliseconds, isn't it? Yes, it, it, it so inflates it's inflated in a few milliseconds. Yeah, and then equally down again, sort and of absorbing energy. down absorbed energy. energy. Yeah. That process is a little, more, a little slower yeah. than the inflation process, but it all does happen extremely quickly. What's actually setting this, this off? What are the mechanics? I mean, it's not air, is it? It's some sort of gas, is it? That's in, in well, it's a combination of air and gas, yeah. which is generated by an inflator, which was specially developed for this motorcycle system. Yeah. And it's fitted inside the motorcycle, of course, so it's protected right. and you can't and, see it. And how big is that? You know, just roughly, I mean... Oh, it, it's, it's sort of about this long, yeah. by about this diameter. Oh, so fairly easy to tuck away then. Well, you yes, it, we did a massive air reservoir. No, no, we did find room for it. Yeah, no, that, that's excellent. Tell me, I'll tell you one thing that strikes you when you're on here. I think, my God, what about if this went off while I was riding along? Well, what have you done to sort of prevent, as far as you're able, one of these things firing off? Well, that, that's a very critical point and a very valid one that you've mentioned. And we did a lot of research with this motorcycle riding over some extremely rough ground to an extent that a normal motorcyclist would never attempt this. Did you do that, did you? No, I didn't do that, no. We, we, <laughs> we um, hired in a specialist to do yeah. that. And we took a lot of measurements all over the motorcycle of the vibrations, and this enabled us to, to set the firing conditions so that the conditions during the impact would fire the airbag, but the conditions that were experienced during this extremely rough riding would not have fired it. And tell me, I've got my, my knees nicely wedged against these. These are the leg protectors. Have, have they got steel bracing behind them? Are they yes, this, this is... Um, I know you took that cover off for us. So is this the steel work I can see down there? Yes, yeah. this, this, is, this is the construction of the leg protection that was fitted inside the motorcycle. But in yeah. the series of tests for the evaluating the airbag system, we were not specifically evaluating the leg protection. No, this it was, was just sort of... It was designed to evaluate the airbag system. Yeah. Okay. One last thing. What's, what's all this up the front here? That, is that anything to do with the system or, or what? This black plastic? Uh, no, that, that was a standard Norton fitting. And yeah. at one time we did wonder whether it would be a good idea to put the airbag inside here. Right. Um, but our computer simulation, which we did at the beginning of this, this project, showed that the ideal place for the airbag was in fact where it is now, which is at the rear of the tank. Yeah. So the position of the airbag when it's fitted to the motorcycle is a very critical part of our investigation and this was shown to be the best position, mainly because it inflates right in front of the rider yeah. and it has the best possible chance of restraining him on the motorcycle up to the point where he inevitably gets thrown clear of yeah. it. So Brian, pretty impressive demonstration this, but where are we now? What's happened to your research? Well, as you said, um, we've concluded our research and TRL is a research organisation and the research we've done has shown that it has great potential, so it's up to others now to take it forward in the best way possible. So it seems that motorcycling could be following the car industry. We could soon be buying machines with airbags fitted as standard. <laughs>